What's up? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. Grab your vices, chill out, and let's get straight to it with episode 48 of Straightforward with Miss B. How you guys are doing today? How are you doing today? It's been a week or so since we last uh, potted. Um, and um, hey, it just be a lot going on for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, as many of you who tune in, um, that may know me, um, hey, potting is not my bread and butter. So, you know, I have to get out there and make that money. And, um, a lot of times I get busy, whether it's with, uh, my career or personal life and, um, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes we just have to do what we got to do. And uh, like I said, this podcast is more of a hobby for me and not a full-time gig type of thing. Um, who knows, eventually, you know, um, as the numbers grow, as far as like uh, followers, subscribers, and listeners grow, um, this may become a full-time thing for me, you know. It may be uh, become very lucrative, but uh, hey, we just keep meditating on that and, 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 you know, manifest it for the future. But until then, hey, your girl got to work. I got to work. You know what I'm saying? Um, so today, what I wanted to get into and discuss is Tari Nichols and that situation with the Memphis police officers. Um. As many of you um, may know by now, Tyree Nichols uh, was a 29-year-old black man um, who was, like I said, he was um, brutally killed um, by Memphis police officers um, for roughly about three minutes on the evening of January 7th. Um, the beating occurred after, you know, he was stopped. Um, what the cops originally stated was for reckless driving. Um, unfortunately, this stop escalated into a very violent confrontation that ended with Mr. Nichols being hospitalized in critical condition. And three days later, he passed away. Before we get into this incident, um, straightforward with Miss B and our listeners would like to send um, our deepest condolences to the family of Mr. Nichols his parents, sisters, brothers, his kids, because I believe he was a father as well, and everyone who loved him, um, also to the city of Memphis and, you know, the local citizens there who are all grieving um, and sending love and light to all of those in Memphis and cr across the United States um, who have been protesting um, on behalf of this unlawful death um, of Mr. Nichols. Um, According to the New New York Times, and I'm just using um, their article as kind of like a basis of our discussion today, five police officers, um, all of whom were black, um, were fired and were charged um, last week with various felonies, including second degree murder there were two other Memphis Police Department officers and two sheriff's deputies um, who have been taken off duty 
And also three fire department employees have been fired. And I believe that um, through this investigation, I think they're doing a probe as well on the um, EMS workers also um, because there is um, some investigation going on about um, whether or not they kind of did all that they could to help uh, Mr. Nichols um, in his time of need. Um, on the 27th of January, the city of Memphis decided to release footage, video footage, body cam footage um, of the incident. For those of you who've had the opportunity to watch that footage, it is it is extremely painful to watch. Um, the video shows officers punching, kicking, um, using their baton um, to beat Mr. Nichols. Um, and during this process, all you could hear was um, Mr. Nichols begging them to stop. He was even calling out his mother. Um, the footage itself um, amounted to almost an hour. Um, like I said, it was compiled from police body cameras and uh, also street cameras as well. Um, they show, the footage shows a portion of the actual traffic stop. Uh, Mr. Nichols running away, the police going after him and ultimately beating him. Now, initially, the MPD, the statement that they were giving, um, um, stated that, a, you know, a confrontation had occurred as they stopped Mr. Nichols' vehicle, and like I stated, he fled. And then there was another confrontation as the officers arrested him. However, an independent autopsy found that Mr. Nichols um, suffered extensive bleeding um, caused by a severe beating. And that was according to pre excuse me, preliminary findings um, that was released by his family's attorneys. On the 23rd of January, Antonio Ramanucci, a lawyer for the Nichols family, um, actually stood alongside um, Mr. Nichols' mother, Ralvon Wells, and stated, quote unquote, he was a human pinata for those police officers. Not only was it violent, it was savage. President Biden watched the entirety of the footage after its release and said in a statement that, he, that the episode was yet another painful reminder of the profound fear and trauma, the pain and the exhaustion that black and brown Americans experience every single day. Today, Mr. Nichols was laid to rest. Um, the funeral was held at the Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church in Memphis. Um, it was stated that Reverend Al Shopton delivered the eulogy and um, Vice President Kamala Harris actually spoke at the funeral. The officers involved because their names need to be put out there too. And most times if you've been listening to my podcast, I don't really like to shine light on the perpetrator or perpetrators, um, but, you know, give the opportunity to, um, you know, share condolences and, 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 
and um, uphold the name and legacy of the actual victim. Um, but in this case, I would definitely like to shed light on these <sighs> these individuals who caused this harm to this young man. Um, to Darius Bean, Demetrius Bailey, I mean Demetrius Haley, Emmett Martin III, Desmond Mills Jr., and Justin Smith all have been charged with multiple felonies. Um, as I stated, that includes second-degree murder, aggravated assault, aggravated kidnapping, official misconduct, and official oppression. That's a new one. I'm going to have to look that one up. Official oppression. Never heard of that one before. But nonetheless, um, the second degree to mur uh, the second degree murder charge um, is punishable up to 60 years in prison and fines up to $50,000, even if a defendant did not strike a blow that by itself would have been fatal. So that means no matter what, even if you're one of these five guys who did not strike Mr. Mr. Nichols, however, you sat and watched or you made some sly comments or you were giving orders, it does not matter. You still may face up to 60 years in prison. The Memphis Police Department um, conducted an internal investigation, of course, and that is when they found that, you know, these officers use excessive force and they fail to intervene or even provide help. Just imagine being a black man. And it was just a couple of years ago, you know, we was on this Black Lives Matter movement, you know, walking the streets, protesting. And for five black men, and they were all kind of fairly young black men, to cause this harm on another black man, that's a goddamn shame. On January 20th, um, the department announced that the officers had all been fired. And like I said, they were fairly young guys. And it looks like they really hadn't really been on the force, you know, too long either. Uh, most of them, most of them had all joined the department between 2017 and 2020. <laughs> There was also a sixth officer, Preston Hill, who was put on leave. Um, I don't know to what degree his participation was. Um, well, it says here he was never present at the second scene, so he was a present initially, I guess, at the traffic stop, but then... Once Mr. Nichols had fled and they caught up with him, um, this sixth person, Mr. Hemphill, um, was not present. However, he was still he was still part of the entire incident in my book. Uh, Mr. Hemphill is white, by the way. So we're going to have to keep a close eye on this and see what type of trickery they pull for him when it goes to trial or if it goes to trial. But at this point, he's only been suspended. He has not been terminated or charged. Go figure.
And apparently a seventh officer has also been suspended. But they have not released his name or any details about um, what part he played in the whole incident. Now, attorneys representing the five officers, um, basically they're trying to caution the public, telling us not to not to pass judgment. No, don't come to these quick conclusions about uh, what happened and, and, and their participation. Um, one lawyer basically stated that no one out there that night intended for Tyree Nichols to die. <laughs> so you don't say? Child, what did they intend? I mean, if you if you got five people beating on you with bats and their hands and punching you and kicking you and shit, I mean, the man was getting jumped. What the fuck? You want to severely hurt him? Well, severely hurting somebody may end up in death. So it's best to not even touch a person at all in that fashion. As far as, like I said, there's other agencies um, where investigations are going on. Uh, for instance, like I said, the Memphis Fire Department is conducting an investigation um, they have fired three of their employees who responded to the team. Um, two sheriff deputies were also relieved of their duty pending an investigation. Um, their names were Sheriff Floyd Bonner Jr. of Shelby County. No, 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 no. That's what Sheriff Floyd Bonner Jr. stated. So they haven't released the fire department employee names. It's just it's just one of those situations that just make you piss the fuck off, yo. Mr. Tyree Nichols, though, and we'll get back on the officers here in a minute because there have been some you know, internet sleuths and some other revelation—I mean, revelations—that came out um, on one of the officers that I wanted to try to get into a little bit here on the pod. Um, but you know, to remember Mister Nichols, um, apparently he, you know, was a FedEx worker. He worked the second shift. Um. And, you know, FedEx, I believe their headquarters may be in Memphis. Memphis is, uh, Memphis um, has a major corporate presence uh, for FedEx in that city. Um, they say that every evening around 7, he would go to his mom's house for his lunch break. And he had been working at FedEx for about nine months. Uh, Mr. Nichols had a four-year-old son. He would go to the same Starbucks every morning around 8.30 a.m. He would go to a, lo a local um, park called Shelby Farms. Um, he photographed sunsets. He skateboarded. He was very passionate um, and creative. His mom said, my son was a beautiful soul. He even had her name tattooed on his arm. Dang. It's so sad, man. Now, according to reports, um, these five officers were part of 
a special um special unit called the Scorpio Scorpion unit and like I said they have not been working with the department um but for for maybe like shoot some three years four years five years no longer than that um the Memphis uh chief and I forgot to pull her name come to find out she used to be the chief police chief here in Atlanta back in the 90s and early 2000s um and basically she had created a special uh law enforcement unit called the Red Dogs if anybody is familiar with the Ooh, excuse me, anybody familiar with the Red Dogs? I myself is uh, very familiar with the Red Dogs. They would kind of take it upon themselves to kind of go beyond just your normal um, law enforcement duties. They would take it to the extreme. Um, a lot of times, you know, they will be in the news for very egregious acts. I think one um, one thing that ultimately got the uh, female chief removed and pushed out of Atlanta um, was that the Red Dog Unit actually, um, actually, you know, kicked the door down and did an unlawful entry into this lady home and this was a very, this was an older lady. I believe she was in her 80s, I believe. But they ended up killing her. And that set the city on fire. I mean, the, the community was pissed off about that. They ran up in the wrong goddamn house and killed that old lady. And that's what ended up, you know, disbanding the Red Dog Unit and also um, getting the police chief the fuck out of Atlanta. And I myself had a run in with the Red Dogs, too, just to tell you guys a quick little story. So for those of you in Atlanta, um, in the 90s, there was this club called The Warehouse. Um, the Warehouse was like a, you know, urban club. It was the spot to be. You can go see concerts there. I, you know, I would see um, even celebrities there, people like, you know, Jermaine Dupri. Um, Little John, at the time, Little John was actually a DJ in the warehouse. Um, I would see Tupac. I, you know, I've been in a club, damn near on the dance floor with Tupac, um, Biggie Smalls, um, Lil' Kim, Mary J. Blyer. So it was a spot to be. So one particular club night, uh, me and this guy used to date. Shout out to Cam. I haven't seen Cam since, hell, since we broke up. But shout out to Cam. We sitting in we sitting in the car and we just, you know, we wait. We got there early because we didn't want to pay a whole lot of money to get in, even though clubs were pretty cheap to go into back then. And it, you didn't have to pay a lot of money to park or no shit like that. So we got there early. We sitting in the parking lot. It, um, the car had tinted windows. So we sitting in the parking lot. You know, we had our little liquor. You know, we was pre-gaming, right? And we had a little bag of weed, and we sitting in the car smoking our weed. Next thing you know, all we hear is, get out the car. Get out the car. And we hear shit banging on the window. It's the fucking red dog unit with semi-automatic weapons dressed in black because they always used to wear, like, all black and shit. Running up on us, sitting in the fucking car, man. And we're just sitting there. Like, my heart started beating so fast because they start giving you orders, and at any moment, you can just make the wrong fucking move, and you get your head blown off. I was scared to fucking move. I think I might have had the weed in my hand. I might have had a blunt in my hand. I did not want to move. All I did was just put my kind of put my hands up that they can see them, and you know what I'm saying? And then eventually, you know, I was able to open up the door, and they had, I mean, they had the guns drawn on us, man. I thought it was it for me. I thought it was it for me. 
So, like I said, I had my little run in with the Red Dogs, but I'm like, damn, we just sitting and we told them, hey, we we waiting for the club to open. We just sitting out here, you know, drinking our little drink and smoking our little weed, and that's it. Please leave us alone. So they finally left after, you know, they looked at a little bag of weed. We, I'm like, we like, look, dude, we just sitting out here waiting for the club to open. We ain't doing nothing wrong. So they ended up just leaving us alone. You know, they didn't tell us to throw the weed away or nothing like that, which was good. Um, So, yeah, but that was my run in. So just think about Red Dogs and then, you know, like I said, this Scorpion unit, was a specialized unit that was created in Memphis, uh, basically to serve as like this, you know, this close knit team of officers to go out and, you know, try to go the extra mile when policing the city. I would put it like that. Um, so now this unit has been um, disbanded because of this situation. Um, of course, the police chief is being investigated again. Here she go again. You know what I'm saying? Creating these, this group of people and it's causing havoc. I mean, it's one thing to try to stop the violence on the street. OK, we want we want our communities to be safe. But at the same time, it's like you need to know right from wrong. You need to be able to, you know, um understand when excessive force is not needed and in this case excessive force was definitely not needed mr nichols did not deserve to be beat on to death by these five gentlemen so apparently this isn't the first go round for a couple of them um a few of them have had previous reprimands um, and suspensions, actually, um, by the MPD. So, um, based on the investigation, there have been personnel files that was obtained, um, and four of the five officers, um, like I said, were either reprimanded or suspended uh, for their failure to report um, when they use physicality, failing to report alleged domestic violence, or for damages sustained to their squad cruisers. So they've been getting into shit. I wonder if these dudes was even trained. They make you think, like, who were they? Were they just somebody that she picked up and decided to hire who, well, we know they probably didn't have any previous law enforcement experience. It just seems as though they just thought they could do what they want to do, and having that badge, you know, badge and uniform on just really boosted their ego to the point where they probably felt untouchable. And then when these previous incidents were happening, apparently they were just swept up under the rug. Like, they face little to no consequences at all. It says, in at least two of the cases, officers were praised of uh, their actions described by MPD colleagues as one-off events for a good employee. Like, Really? Swept it under the rug. One summary from a hearing about a domestic violence call that went undocumented credited the actual police officer under review for being a top producer. Ain't that some shit? And I think this was Demetrius Haley. They said that Demetrius Haley was given a written reprimand in November 2021 after he failed to file a response to resistance form. 
In February 2021, a woman complained after he grabbed a complainant by the arm and turned her around to be handcuffed as she resisted arrest. Apparently, police officers are required to complete a response to resistance form when any part of the officer's body is used to compel compliance. It says Officer Haley advised that he understood the policy but had simply forgot about it, forgot about filling out the form, basically. But then turn around and the Memphis police lieutenant basically praised him, called Mr. Haley a hardworking officer um, who routinely makes good decisions. So, a few months after that, it says Mr. Haley was driving his police cruiser, speeding in an emergency mode, uh, which means that he had the lights blaring and the sirens were on, and he lost control of the car as he made a turn. He hit the curb and a stop sign. The fuck? Mills Jr., Desmond Mills Jr., one of the other officers, he was given a written reprimand for not filing a response to resistance form um, after a March 2019 arrest. In the statement of charges, Mills Jr., he was accused of taking a woman police Taking a woman police, pol- uh, taking a woman police were trying to arrest to the ground to assist in handcuffing, cuffing her. He didn't, he forgot to fill out the form. I'm like, did they get any type of training? <sighs> Officer Emmett Martin the third. He was suspended for three days without pay for not checking the back seat of his cruiser after leaving a shift. A silver revolver was found in the back seat. Oh, my God. Just imagine him going to lock up somebody and the person in the back seat ended up finding a revolver in the back. Like, come on, man. He was later suspended for a day without pay after he didn't take a report after responding to an alleged domestic violence call in September 27, 2020. Officers are required to take a report of DV calls, but he forgot to. Officer Justin Smith, he received a two-day suspension in July 2021 after hitting another vehicle, causing it to spin out and hit a third vehicle. According to the statement of charges, Smith was driving an unmarked cruiser that was not an emergency road when he hit the back end of a Ford F-150. These guys just act like they didn't have to... I believe that because they were part of this special unit, I believe, like I said, it boosted their egos and they thought that they were above the law. I really and truly do. Now, in addition to that, so like I said, thank God for the internet sleuths, right? Because you go on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, you end up finding out more details about you know, some of these individuals and uh, everybody kind of wondered, like, it didn't take five dudes to beat up one man, right? To that extent. Okay, the man, Nichols, you know, had a traffic stop. They say he was reckless driving. He started running away. He fled the scene. They caught up with him again. But does that does that equate to 
him being brutally beaten. No, it don't. And it shouldn't. And it shouldn't. So it has many people thinking, what is the true motive behind this situation? Like, for Mr. Nichols to be the one that had to deal with this that night, could it be some other shit going on that, you know, possibly we don't know about. So allegedly someone posted on Facebook that the story gets a little bit deeper. According to this person on Facebook, and unfortunately I can't see their full name. Oh, it is here. Someone named King Dre Dawson. This is what he wrote on Facebook. Turns out, Tari, hashtag Tari Nichols worked at FedEx and one of the officers, 30-year-old Demetrius Haley, Haley's ex, ex-girlfriend and the mother of his child worked at FedEx too says Demetrius took a picture of Tyree Nichols on the ground and he sent it to his ex. I guess to say, look who I done beat the fuck up tonight. He took a picture, sent it to his ex. All of the officers involved went out bad over this man's personal issue. Tyree Nichols and Haley's ex-girlfriend slash baby mother had a relationship. Then someone added on to that, somebody named Rollo Cobb. He stated, before I met Lisa, so I'm assuming that's the girl's name, before I met Lisa, I lived there for a minute, and I told my wife, That my friend, and then in parentheses, he's into that nightlife, had called me that lives in Memphis as soon as this happened. And he told me that the police officer had been arguing with Tyree Nichols over his ex-girlfriend for months. Killed him over a woman that wasn't even his. I don't know how true it is, but anyway. Now, if you think about this, I mean, it sounds it sounds a very, like a very plausible story. Men be going crazy over these bitches, don't they? And apparently, Demetrius Haley was pussy whipped over this girl and his baby mama. And he clearly didn't want to see, if this is true, he clearly did not want to see her move on. He found out who the other guy was and, and that pissed him off. I'm sure Demetrius using his, you know, law enforcement resources, probably stalked Tyree. He knew, I'm sure he knew Tyree's address. He probably knew Tyree mama address. Everybody. He probably stalked Tyree and said, look, I'm finna get this dude out the way. He need to get out the picture. And then unfortunately that night came and they pulled up on the Nichols, um, Mr. Nichols, and uh, Mr. Nichols had to lose his life over some dumb shit. So, like I said, I don't know how true this this is about the female, the ex girlfriend. Um, but if it is true, black men, we need to do better. There has been a multitude of cases where we hear, um, just men in general, where we hear that men taking their frustrations out either on the female 
and and leaving them dead somewhere, you know what I mean? Or in this situation, taking it out on the next dude. It's like, man, sometimes, you know, when it's time to part part ways from somebody and the relationship ain't working out, it's for a reason. The girl left for a reason. But you want to take it out on the next dude, your anger and frustration? What are we doing? And going back to the point of it being black, a black thing, black on black, it's like it's, it was senseless. It was heinous. It was uncalled for. It should not have happened. It should not have happened. So, as with everybody that's been paying attention um, to this incident, this situation, we are going to be looking and see, um, see what happens. You know, unfortunately, these were black officers. Um, we could probably expect them to throw the books at them as they should. However, with the justice system, we need to see this happen all across the board, no matter what your skin skin tone is. Justice need to be served, no matter what. Again, I want to send my condolences and prayers out to the Nichols family and all of his loved ones. And for all of you out there that continue to support Straightforward with Miss B, um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, again, as always, if you have any Ask Miss B questions, you can always um, send them to me at Straightforward Media at Gmail. Or you can DM us at Straightforward MSB on all social media platforms. And please follow the podcast on all um, streaming platforms as well. Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Audible. We're everywhere. STR, the number 8 FWD with Miss B. And until next time, peace out. <laughs>